Hi everyone, thanks for joining in. I've just pressed the admit all button uh, on our meeting today. Um, really glad to have you here. Uh, my name is Jana, I'll be your host today. I think a lot of you already know me. Um, Today's career talk session is all about life and careers, especially careers with startups in Berlin. And I have two really, really special guests, which I'm going to introduce to you in a few minutes. Um, before I do so, I, um, yeah, I just have some housekeeping to do a few things to tell you before we jump into the topic. Um, first of all, uh, you are warmly invited to ask questions in this event um, throughout the whole session today. So we will have one hour of, um, I think, um, yeah, interesting insights and discussion. Um, but these events um, uh, yeah, are part of a career, uh, career talk series. So we already hosted a few of them and we really aim at making them um, as interactive as possible. So um, feel free to ask questions in our chat. You can either um, send them directly to me or just post them publicly on the chat, um, whatever you feel comfortable with. Um, also, just for me to make sure that, you know, I'm audible and visible to all of you, I'd warmly invite you to maybe say hi and let us know where you are based, um, or where you are from, and yeah, whatever you want to share with us. Maybe you have a specific topic on mind um, or a question related um, to Berlin and Berlin startups. Um, so yeah, just say hi in the chat um, to let us know that you're there. Uh, we'd yeah, really appreciate that. Um, today is the first career talks um, series or session after our summer break. So, um, and it's also the first session where I'm having yeah, two guests. So we already hosted a few of these events um, throughout this year. Um, I started this career talk series um, at the beginning of 2021 um, because uh, I think there are a lot of um, yeah, great people out there who have a lot, of, a lot of knowledge to share on careers in Germany. And, um, we thought that the best way to tap into their knowledge um, would be to invite them over and have a chat with them and let you ask questions directly. Um, and that's what we're doing in this format um, today as well. Um, I have two guests, as I said. So one of them is um, Gabrielle. Uh, really happy to have you here today. Um, Gabrielle is a head of product at Ecolot. Um, he's been working in product management uh, since, I think, 20 years, right? Yeah, a bit more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so you bring in a lot of experience uh, with different companies, um, also um, in, in, in different sectors, I understood. So ranging from publishing to enterprise software, security, games, and much more. Um, and I think what's really special is that um, one, you also moved to um, Berlin yourself or to Germany about seven years ago. It's right? going to be eight years. I think it's been eight oh. years just Eight these years. days, yeah. Yeah, so that's quite a long time. Um, so you have this experience of what it's like to um, start over in a new place, specifically in Berlin. And on top of that, um, in our yeah, previous conversation, you also told me that you have also interviewed and hired um, dozens of yeah, product managers, designers, software specialists, and so on, right? Mm -hmm. um, exactly, yes. Yeah. So I think um, that's super interesting because you kind of combine both perspectives of hiring people and moving here yourself. Um, so yeah, really glad to have you here today. And I have a lot of questions prepared for you. Um, but before we dive into that, I also want to uh, welcome uh, my second guest today, uh, Bastien. Um, really to have you, really glad to have you here as well. Um, Thank you for your advice. Happy as well. Cool. Yeah. So thank you for joining in. Um, Bastien is a product manager and blogger who's based in Berlin. And I think if you have ever researched stuff on Berlin or if you're already living here in Berlin yourself, I'm pretty sure that you have come across his blog, which is called settleinberlin.com. Um, a lot of my friends and the people I know in the startup community here who have moved here over the past few years have made use of Settle, of, uh, Settle in Berlin. So I think it's a great resource um, for everyone um, who wants to start a life here. And Bastien, I, I understood that you, you've been running this blog for almost 10 years already, right? Yeah, correct. So that's a pretty long time. And ever since I moved here. Yeah. <laughs> so. Awesome. 
So, which brings me to the second point. So, you are also you also have this yeah first hand of experience of move, moving to Berlin and working for different startups um, in different roles, also particularly in product management. Um, so, I think um, yeah, there's a lot of knowledge to tap into um, on your side as well, um, not only from your personal experience, but also from your work with them, um, settleinberlin.com, because I saw on your blog that you get like, I don't know, thousands of comments by people <laughs> who are moving here and struggling with bureaucracy and so on. So I'm, I'm pretty sure that you get a lot of insights from that as well. Yeah. Wonderful. So I can also see um, a lot of comments on the chat um, right now. We do have a few persons from Berlin, which is um, really great. And also someone from Frankfurt, people from India, Pakistan, and uh, many other places. So um, very glad to have you here. I also saw that a few more persons have joined in over the past few minutes. So for those of you who missed out on the beginning, um, feel free to post your questions in the chat and um, say hi to us. There's also an option to give us feedback so you can use smileys and other icons to let us know if you like what we are discussing, if it's interesting to you or not, if there's other stuff you would like to know about. So do make use of the tools that um, we have here. But yeah, let's dive into today's topic. So today we'll focus on Berlin, Berlin Startup Life. Um, and from my personal experience, um, I'm, I'm um, yeah, I was born and raised in Berlin, so I'm a Berliner. I don't have the experience of moving here, just of moving abroad. <laughs> um, and what I've seen is that um, Berlin has changed a lot over the past decade. So I think um, particularly when it comes to startups, um, um, yeah, the whole startup community has become very vibrant. We have more and more candidates and yeah, really skilled people moving here. And um, I think the whole yeah, digital sector, e-commerce, SaaS companies and so on have been, yeah, they have been developing really well. Um, so I think that comes with a lot of upsides, a lot of opportunities for international candidates, but obviously there are also a lot of challenges, right? Um, and I think that's also something we discussed when we were preparing today's session. Um, um, we'll also talk a bit about red flags during job search and so on. Um, so, Gabrielle, I wanted to ask you, um, you moved here about yeah, seven years ago. So what, what brought you to Berlin in the beginning? Why, why did you decide to move to Berlin and work for a startup here? So um, it, it's an interesting question, first of all. Um, uh, and, and it's always difficult to answer because I didn't have like a particular goal to be in Berlin. I was uh, really looking for a change. I had my own company that I've been um, building for, I think it was seven years, doing a bit of part time in between, but it was, it was quite a, quite a long project. And at some point I said, okay, great, let's, let's look for a change. I was living in Paris at the time. Mm -hmm. uh, and I decided to look for a job in any, any place that would allow me to have like a, grow my network, meet interesting people and uh, start fresh in a way. So I looked at a couple other European cities and Berlin was the one where I found the most interesting uh, option, let's say, or, or, or proposal. So I came here to work for Rocket Internet, one of their ventures. It was a super nice experience and the whole move uh, process was also quite, quite an interesting experience. And would you say that it was challenging um, to, to find a job in the first place? Um, like, or mm -hmm. did you already know people here? No, I didn't know anyone, and that's that's quite interesting. Maybe don't don't take my advice because there was a bit of luck involved in, in my case. But I came here, so I never met, not even a video call with my wow. with my um, employers. I never been in Berlin in my life. I never seen the apartment. It was a Vega that I, I I rented. So I just signed the papers, came to Berlin, and moved in and went to work. So. It can happen, definitely, yeah. definitely feasible. And you have opportunity to Berlin to do this, but you don't know what you're getting. So I, I was lucky and I, I had uh, amazing colleagues and it was really a, a super project. But you moved here honest, with I would not recommend family, it. Right? You moved, so, you moved here with family eventually. Exactly. So I, I have a family, so I, had, I have two kids. Uh, I moved here and they followed uh, uh, after a couple of months. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, it was, it was a risk in many ways. Uh, but it was kind of controlled, let's say, because you do have a job, you have a, an employment, um, 
there are opportunities in Berlin. So it's, I wouldn't say easy, but you will not go without a job for too long in Berlin in, in this field. Yeah, and um, so you did not end up in a Berlin flat scam or something from what I'm- No, I'm no, no, I, I was, I, the, the beginning was very interesting. So I, I have some stories like uh, for, like in Sebast in uh, Bastian's um, 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 games or, or, or war, yeah. war stories. Yeah. So I was in a Vege, I met some super interesting people. My host was a very interesting guy. So I have some Berlin stories, but maybe that's for, for a different kind of chat. <laughs> Yeah, I think for for that we can get uh, we can um, yeah get back to Bastian's game later on, which which I think is the best experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that was <laughs> it's it's funny because it's true, like it's yeah. it happens like that. Fully agree. Um, okay, but that's um, really uh, cool to hear. I think you also mentioned a bit of luck in the beginning. I think that's also the case um, for a lot of people I know that yeah, sometimes it does take a bit of luck for everything to Absolutely, work. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, Bastian, what what is what was it like for you? Because I mean, I understand that you started your blog around the same time you were moving here, right? So, uh, what was the trigger for that? Did you experience a lot of challenges? Yeah, my so my story is a bit different uh, from Gabriel. So I'm a bit younger as well. I'm not as ancient as as him. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I moved to Berlin uh, right after my studies. So mm -hmm. I didn't have any family, uh, nothing to lose. Um, just, just, uh, just looking around where, where, where is, uh, where is a good uh, scene right now to, to develop yourself professionally and personally as well speaking. Uh, where can you have a good quality of life? Um, where, is there, like, where is there a lot of uh, potential for, for self-development? Mm -hmm. um, and it's not a very uh, a very uh, unique story like right after my studies I, I decided that this place would be Berlin and um, and I initially start, want, thought I wanted to work in the music industry uh, which I immediately regretted so uh, <laughs> I, I moved industry and also uh, started to work for Rocket Internet mm -hmm. uh, in, in the very early days of HelloFresh. Uh, and that's where I had my, uh, my first e-commerce related experience touching, um, touching every like, lot of different roles and functions within the company because it's very early days. Uh, so I was doing uh, analytics. I was doing a bit of uh, product ownership, um, every, like a lot, of, a lot of things, yeah. And then so I really broad picture, right? Um, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. But I didn't stay for too long because uh, it was not my uh, was not my my jam. The the way the things were going there. Mm -hmm. um, so then I moved on to a to another e-commerce company. Um, yeah, and then eventually uh, to product management as well and. While yeah, while doing all of this, I was I just started my blog, and it was just I was just helping my colleagues and friends uh, all the time, repeating the same things about how to how to do this, uh, mm -hmm. how to do the taxes, how to register yourself, and I was just fed up repeating myself. So I thought, okay, I just put it online, and then I just have to send a link next time, and it's how it started, and. Uh, like no traffic, no, no nothing. And then uh, people started to see the website. People started to ask questions in the comments and then little by little they grew it, grew it, grew. And uh, yeah, that's how it's, it started. And so to answer you, your question, um, uh, what was my challenges? Uh, it was more about uh, finding the right company to work for. So the, the, um, the, the you know, with the, the kind of management and work values that align with with mine yeah that was that was more because i think in general i think it's still the case that you can't find a job relatively easily mm -hmm. depending on your on your uh, profile but it's not a job uh, sorry it's it's could could only just be a job and not a career and yeah. i think for me there's a big difference between how do you get a job and how do you get a meaningful career? And 
something. That's one of the messages I want to get across. Yeah. That's, that's very true. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's also a topic we kind of tapped into um, when we had, when we were preparing this session, right? Um, um, so Gabrielle, you also mentioned um, earlier that um, you think that it's yeah, definitely possible to find a job in Berlin and that there are a lot of options. Um, so would you say that it's easy to find a job specifically as an international candidate? Right yes, I, I would definitely say it's mm -hmm. it's well easy. Of course, that's relative to, to everyone, yeah. but I would say it's possible for sure and, yeah. and accessible to a lot of people. I I worked in a company and Bastian was part, Bastian was part of the same uh, the same um, company at a time. We were working only with people uh, remotely, basically, not necessarily in outside of Germany, but in um, in different parts of the world, including Germany. Uh, I work today. I work in a company that hired uh, developers remotely. We the, plus, of course, everybody knows that the, the the COVID pandemic just changed everything. So now, getting a job, getting the interview done, and getting hired in Germany remotely or to come on site is definitely doable. Again, easy is very relative, but yeah. I think we may even call it easy. Yeah, it, I guess it also depends on the skill set, right? So from what I For see sure, is yes. that if you have a skill set that's um, in need, like if you're a software developer with um, uh, the right skills, if you have an engineering background, um, like a lot of technical skills, then mm -hmm. you, it's definitely easier, right, than with other profiles. Um, so it, it really depends. Um, and you, I mean, you have also hired candidates here, right? Um, mm -hmm. So would you say that it's an advice? I mean, it makes a big difference if a candidate is already in Berlin or in Germany um, as compared to, you know, still it's, being- It's a plus. plus, it's a plus, but it's not a big difference. It's a plus. And actually this is um, something that's decided already before the job is posted. Yeah. Right. So when, when a yeah. job is online and you apply for it, you should have some expectations. So it's usually in the title, like we hire remotely or we hire mm -hmm. from anywhere and so on. So you should you should know what you're getting into mm -hmm. and it's fairly straight straightforward communicated mm -hmm. uh and yeah it, it's it's an advantage to be on site if if the yeah. job requires it definitely an advantage to be on site to have a face-to-face -face interview to come to the office it helps but it's not a blocker in any way you can still do it remotely like i did it many other people did it yeah and yeah my first job here uh it was a rocket internet company and this is a huge group as you probably everybody know everybody here knows and they hire a lot of people like changes from venture to venture i'm sure because the founders have their they're saying that but where we were the entire development team was hired remotely before they even ever came to germany well wow, that's that's good to know because i my impression was that i mean it also got like the pandemic changed a lot of things and some recruitment processes have been put on hold but i also see that it got easier to get remote work but it's yeah. good to see that it was also there before like right now i can really see a lot of roles coming up where companies say uh, specifically that yeah we are willing to hire on a remote basis mm -hmm. or flexible mm -hmm. but that's that's a small difference because the um we were still working on site like we were hired before we got to germany but the big difference now is that you have this actual remote remote office situation where you can actually do it from anywhere like yeah. you don't have to, to ever come to, to germany to, uh, to do True. your job yeah i mean i do get some companies who struggle with the whole payroll stuff and so on so some companies are still hesitant <laughs> yeah. but that's yeah. german bureaucracy right <laughs> yeah yeah there's yeah. Well, we, uh, I'm I'm uh, a bit French, but uh, Bastien is French as well, so we, we know we, we've seen worse probably. <laughs> okay, that's that's interesting to hear because it's uh, I think Germany is yeah, pretty challenging when it comes to that. Yeah, I mean I would I I'm still like I would I'm also interested to see uh, the impact um, on on work culture uh, that the, mm -hmm. the the COVID situation had, especially for German. Um, companies that have been very not flexible um, mm -hmm. regarding uh, remote work, working from home. That's not something that is in the German culture at all. And I mean, of course, this is true, mostly true for corporate big, uh, big companies, corporate like old fashioned companies. Um, like for with Gabriel, we work for several of those at the comp at the agency we work for, and 
Mm-hmm. Um, every time we were trying to fill a position, even if it's just for freelancing, um, on site was almost always a requirement. So um, I know in this conversation today we are uh, talking about startups, but I think some of the work culture is also trickling down from corporate definitely uh, corporate companies. But also, also I think what has probably um, help the hiring from from people abroad is that there is now with the immigration office there is this um how is it called expedite exp, I, mean, exp, I don't know how you would say it in, in english is expedite like this fast track for mm-hmm. qualified skilled workers yeah like a fast track visa application yeah uh, yeah there you go mm-hmm. and and this is probably also one of the reasons why maybe it has been easier or has been for some profiles, because again, we're talking about the, the, the privileged profiles that are super needed and super relevant in the, in, in, the, in the job market in Berlin, that it's easier for them, definitely. Yes. Uh, but I think we need to talk, we don't need to talk about the, the crowd that uh, has definitely potential for success coming to Berlin, but doesn't have the right, doesn't take the right boxes to be, to have this preferred treatment treatment. Yeah. And for them, um, like, I, I, I think we have a little disagreement with Gabriel because I think he's a little more optimistic than I am. Um, and I think for the people that are not software developers, that are not uh, data analysts, uh, those kind of people, um, there's a huge, uh, very qualified, like a huge pool of very qualified talents around all those profiles already in the game, um, which means that there's competition on, on, on those. And uh, this might mean that you'll have more trouble to get a foot in the door, uh, but you can still good, get a foot in the door. And maybe it means that you won't get the right job that you wanted right away, but you still have you come here and you start to, to uh, make a home for yourself and you can hopefully, it's a stepping stone, but um, like hopefully you don't, suff- like you don't suffer from it or you don't fall into the, the, the wrong kind of jobs Yeah. Uh, on, on the way. That's, I, I do understand what you mean. And that's also some um, something we discussed um, yeah, beforehand, right? So that there is a group of people who's also struggling with finding jobs. Um, and that there are, of course, also red flags when it comes to job search. Like I think um, there are companies trying to hire people at a lower salary than the actual market value and so on. Um, but before um, we get to that, I also wanted to ask you, so for, for persons who have a profile that's maybe not that much in demand, so let's say people who don't have a developer background or um, other like, yeah, these kind of profiles. Um, what would you say is a kind of prerequisite that makes it easier to find a job? Find a job? Are there anything, is there anything that people can do um, to, yeah, to increase their are, chances? Are we talking about uh, uh, people that need a visa to work in Germany? Are we talking about this subset of? Yeah, let's visa? say people who need a visa. Um, yeah. Like I saw, we have a few candidates from India, for instance. So let's say we have someone from India who has a um, marketing background. Um, so this means that the person with such a profile will be competing with a lot of candidates who are probably um, uh, who probably have an EU passport or <laughs> who are German and already um, here. Um, so uh, I think for, for such candidates, it will be difficult to find a job, right? I, I wish I could tell. I'm, I yeah. don't have that much experience in, uh, in, um, in other fields. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We, we also live in a bubble, like I've seen some of the questions that are coming in the, in the yeah. chat. We are living in a bubble, which is a software development world. Yeah. So yeah. it's a privilege in a way, like it's also like there's a lot, a lot more people doing this. It's not like a, an infinite um, uh, resource either. So yeah. I, I can't really tell much about other, other fields. So. Some yeah. of the companies I worked in were not just software developers. Like they were, they were, they were like uh, basically every company today is a software development company. So yeah. some of them were doing food, food deliveries. Others were doing uh, I don't know, uh, um, selling online. Um, 
uh, auctioning auctioning valuable yeah. valuable stuff yeah. online so, so so there was a lot of my colleagues were not in the in this world and um yeah i i would say it's not very different from any other field or any other situation or city even or, or and so on mm -hmm. just to have a nice cv be nice to people and, and, <laughs> and stuff will happen there is a, a demand because uh is no longer and for many years it was no longer this uh, this software development bubble is no longer about the software development it's about every other company becoming a software development company so you have people delivering stuff you have people building things in real life building uh so you had airbnb which was like a, one of the typical examples or any of the e-commerce sites you have the, those models being developed for everything now so you have airbnb for cats and you have um e-commerce for absolutely anything and those require a lot of logistics and people on the sides who are building that that business is not a pure software uh, company anymore sure. so there is a demand the, there is a very good chance to get especially marketing is, is always associated with, with the software as a service or software build uh, logistics companies so i would say yeah it, there is a demand uh, looking to it and that's pretty much all i could i could say about it because it's not necessarily my field yeah, but I, I do agree to that. I think that's um, also very helpful to know. That's also something I often tell candidates I work with, that um, it's not just the technical skills, it's also um, the industry experience, for instance. So you you just mentioned, mm -hmm. um, uh, or you mentioned earlier, you mentioned HelloFresh, for instance, um, or Airbnb. So um, I, I often get candidates um, from India, for instance, who have worked for startups in India who have built, helped building them for the Indian market, because India also has a booming startup environment. Um, and I think um, it's often underestimated that this experience also counts. So sometimes it's also course, a matter yeah. of how a candidate um, markets him or herself and um, how um, clear it is that um, this person actually has this kind of industry experience. So I think that's something that really helps with job search as well to, to understand a bit what kind of startups we have right now maybe um, look at um, VCs and investors. Um, we had we talked about Rocket Internet before, but there are also several others out there and to see what, what they are investing in and then um, maybe um, look for companies where you have yeah, spe specific experience. So I think that also really helps, um, yeah. Yeah, so it's the, um, the thing is with, with uh, these startups and the startup seed itself is that it may be true, it may be exaggerated, just because uh, the founders have a have an ego that wants wants to believe this is that they believe that what they're building is original, and people will have to spend some time learning and adapting, right? Yeah. So they are willing yeah. to take somebody who's smart and has some credentials, even if they don't necessarily have a lot of experience in that field. Yeah. So there there's that. So they will always appreciate and try to hire someone who has you know a good communication, good experience in one specific field, even if it's not necessarily the one that's directly applicable to to the business itself. Because there is the expectation that this will be disrupting and original. And if you have too much experience even in the field, it doesn't necessarily equal to being the best person for the job. Yeah, agree. And that brings me to another question. So uh, we also had someone asking about that. So. Um, what about um, language skills? So I think um, when it comes to founders, we also have a bit of a mixed landscape, right? So we have international founders here who are not Germans, but we also have a lot of German founders um, starting companies here. So would you say that you need to speak German to find a job here? So this maybe Bastian, you want to answer this one? <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, at large, you don't, you don't, since this is a conversation and we talk about startups uh, yeah. only, uh, I mean, and, and startups can be really anything from like a two, three people business to okay. like thousands and thousands of employees. Um, at large, you, uh, German is not a prerequisite. So you, you, it won't be a problem. However, uh, I think for, um, for some, for some people, uh, there might be a, a point where German will start to diminish their chances to go further in their career. So mm -hmm. like a sort of glass ceiling where in some companies, the decision makers, the people holding the money, uh, deciding who gets promoted, those are the German speakers. 
often, sometimes, not often, but sometimes, yeah. And um, I, don't, I don't think you should underestimate the, the, the power of even casually speaking German for the water cooler conversation or for picking up something the founders have said and then and, and chip in. Uh, this can sometimes make a difference whether or not you, you stay at this level and or you get to get uh, promoted or, 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 or get another opportunity. Um, again, this is not a rule, but I think it still has a strong value. Uh, but for in, for the initial job search and get and, and coming here and getting here, finding a job, no. But it might be a problem. I've seen I've seen that uh, in some of my uh, my colleagues in France that uh, were a bit older, mm -hmm. uh, and they all, they were like all those sort of senior positions, and they were quite expensive. And they wouldn't get the next job because they needed to have a German. Yeah. And uh, they, so, so this is this is um, something out there. But again, it's more for like the long term than for the initial um, search job. I have a, a very different view on this. Like I'm, <laughs> I, have, I didn't have the same experience. So I'm, I'm. Senior enough, uh, I work for already in Berlin for I think five companies by now. Um, it's it was never a problem. Like depends on the founders, of course, and depends on their culture that the culture they want to instill in the company. But uh, most of the time, they are really trying to to push for being more more uh, international, being language language neutral. Let's say from conversations, even as soon as somebody is, is not speaking German, they would be, and the, the, the conversation switches automatically to, to English. All documentation and email exchanges are in English. That's absolutely common and- Yeah, uh, sure. Uh, I'm talking about the more informal now, the informal mm -hmm. uh, means of communication. I think, but I think, I think again, I'm, I'm trying to speak outside our bubble of you know, tech related, you know, product related. Like um, for true. sure, if you're a software, if you're a software, if you're a dev, not mm -hmm. like even in the long term, you you probably won't need uh, German at all. But I'm th I'm thinking about when you're not in those uh, positions, it could probably be a, be a problem for for sales, for example, sales. Yeah, yeah. Even that's, if you don't uh, uh, call German clients to sell them stuff, you'll have to manage people who do, and then you need to understand the sales process in German. That's, that's you know, all, or for example, if you oversee marketing material, marketing campaigns, you'll need to be able to review uh, Google ads, the copy, the copy that was made by the whoever does the copy. Yeah? So definitely so, depends on the job. Absolutely yeah. right. Like this is being, being the software development business is, is again, uh, special. It's a bubble. Uh, my German in the these eight years didn't really improve that much, so <laughs> I, I didn't use it professionally ever. But you're right. Uh, if I'm thinking of my my colleagues who are not in the in the in the tech team or the tech group, definitely German was an advantage and a requirement often. Maybe also to add to that, I, I think it's really interesting to hear both perspectives because there are also like um, yeah just simply different ex um, yeah perspectives and experiences. And, and in one of my earlier sessions, I had someone as a guest who um, mainly worked for um, Mittelstand companies, so medium-sized traditional companies. And I think that's also. Um, uh, a completely different world. So he said that, okay, for these companies, it's a must to speak German. There's mm -hmm. no chance to, to um, uh, build a career without German um, language skills. Um, but yeah, I think in Berlin and for startups, it, it really depends on, on the kind of role. I've also seen that in, in sales, it's a bit more difficult. It's really helpful to speak German because most of the customers will probably be German speaking, um, but for, for instance, for marketing and um, other roles, um, I have seen that it's also possible if you don't speak German, but it's maybe an advantage. So it's, you maybe get better jobs and more career opportunities if you actually speak German because- Yeah, if, if for the, I meant again for the later stage, for the initial, yeah. Yeah. initial start, not a problem, yeah. but it's really more if you think about five years in the future. Fully agree, fully agree. And would you say that to, to um, 
uh, deal with German bureaucracy and paperwork, <laughs> because that's also something you um, um, write about a lot, right? You provide a lot of um, um, guides, for instance, on how to deal with that. Would you say that for this kind of stuff, you need German in Berlin specifically? Uh, well, no, because my, my blog is perfect and provides all the information you need. <laughs> uh, uh, I mean, yes, of course, it's always a, a plus, but now you have so much resources and you can, you always know a guy, like if you don't find it online, you always know a guy that, yeah. or, or somebody that has done it yeah. um, recently, especially, you know, if you just come, like naturally, if you just arrive, you tend to tag along with people in the same stage as you um so you'll always find help uh, i mean yeah so if you have basic german it will make your life a lot easier you'll spend a lot less time and stress on those things um but yeah if you have only english please visit setonable.com and you'll be sorted uh yeah or you find a friend to help you Okay, yeah, that's that's good to hear. I think that's also something that makes Berlin very special compared to other cities. Like, for instance, I've also spent a few years in Munich, um, where you also find a lot of internationals, but still to like get around daily life, you will need to speak German. Um, so Berlin is, um, I think, yeah, just um, easier when it comes to that. Um, I also have someone um, here in the chat who says that, okay, he has a yeah, software quality manager background. And I think I think that's a good example. Um, um, and he has applied for several positions. He even speaks German, but um, he still hasn't found a job. So um, we, of course, we don't know this candidate specifically. So it also depends a bit on the skills. But um, would you say, or do you have any um, experience um, with, um, yeah, candidates that probably have a profile that's in demand but still don't find a job. Like, do you, do you have any idea what candidates like this could do? Are there any, um, let's say, pitfalls or um, also things that you have come across in your hiring process that are different here? Um, I I can't really say if it's a if it's a particular. A red flag on some some way or or some other some other cause um yeah i i need to know maybe just a little more about the, the situation let's say yeah, uh, yeah. It, it can happen for sure like i mean you may be uh, addressing some particular companies or or maybe have some expectations which are not or maybe there's a typo in your in your CV. i don't want to blame you for for this but <laughs> I, I really don't know like it, it could be could be anything doesn't sound very usual let's say to have such a long wait or such a such a long search mm -hmm. um so yeah I'm, I'm not sure what what could be happening there yeah 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 i mean it's difficult to tell without knowing this person specifically but i i picked up the question because i I do get a lot of candidates who, who are struggling with this issue. And um, very often when, when um, I look at that, like we often, we sometimes have career workshops for candidates. Mm -hmm. We work a lot with students here as well. What I often see is that, yeah, sometimes there are typos and also maybe sometimes the CV is too long or not designed for the specific position. Like we, we uh, I said that earlier, right? That it's also helpful to show your specific industry experience, for instance. And I, I think here in Germany, people pay a lot of attention to what exactly is written in the job description and so on. And that's mm -hmm. a bit different mm -hmm. abroad from, I don't know what it's like in France, but in India and in the US, for instance, I've seen that um, people often apply to several positions and then the HR figures out whom they like best. But here we want like an individual application. <laughs> so having, having been in the position to filter through those dozens yeah. of applications for a job, um, yeah. It definitely helps to have a, a nice, well, well-adjusted application for that particular uh, job description. So, mm -hmm. if it feels like you are not reading the job description, or feels like you are just spam applying to um, to to it, like among a, a dozen other jobs, mm -hmm. it will be rejected quite fast. It's yeah. it's that true yeah. because you have to know that there's um, there really are a lot of candidates and it's sometimes easy to uh, to filter out the 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 one in ten that will make it to an interview if you have 30 candidates you want to interview three three to five maybe yeah it's 
yeah, you will shortlist easily half of them. Like yeah. it's super, super quick. And then the other half, you will spend some more time. You'll go through them, maybe ask some questions and you get down to a very short list. And yeah, you have to, and it's not that difficult. The, it really goes in, in both ways. Like if, if you have someone who, um, who uh, spam applies to a lot of jobs, that's, you, you see it. Like when you see those applications, you know, like, you know, you almost see the, like in the metric, you see the tokens, like this is also a placeholder. They just put my, my, uh, my company's name in there and the rest is like super boilerplate. So that doesn't help. Like take better to apply to five, five different positions, but take your time, write the proper letter, super short, always appreciate it. It's like a, a paragraph or two to say that you understood what this is about. Mm -hmm. and that's that's all and um ask for advice like when you apply and you get rejected if you have some sort of answer that was like you know the person was not just like pushing the button ask them like look i i tried i tried for many months to get a job i'm getting rejections i'm not sure what's going on maybe you can give me an advice i whenever somebody says that i always go back and 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 give them some some reason why this was this was happening that's really motivating to hear. Um, that's also something I'm always yeah, telling people that it's always good to ask for feedback. Um, and I think what you were saying about um, yeah, writing a short um, letter and also about um, really looking at the CV that it's yeah, just properly like done in a proper designed in a proper way. I think that's, that's um, really um, good to hear because I think sometimes people forget that it's, it's not just um, um the fact that yeah you need to make it through the selection process um um but you also need to be yeah convincing in your skill set and everything and yep. i think uh, for people getting i don't know hundreds of applications you need to stand out somehow so it's worth yes. it to invest some time in application documents yeah, it's yeah. it's not that because it, um people do want to hire you know yeah. smart yeah. people who are, are good for yeah. the job even if they're not the best writers let's say so it's absolutely fine to have a cv which is maybe it doesn't have the, the nicest wording or it has the, the best design, it's, it's okay. You, yeah. you will always look at the experience and other things, but you don't want to stand out with something that's like illegible, super long, uh, has spelling errors or, or things like that. Right? Yeah. Just make sure you don't stand out in the negative, in a negative sense. And then it's still going to be about your experience and everything else. It doesn't have to be the prettiest or the most outstanding CV, as long as it doesn't stand out to, you know, not to make it to the first, uh, the first uh, uh, shortlisting. Yeah. Fully agree. And by the way, we also have a lot of videos on that on our Mitra YouTube channel. So on German CV writing, also if you apply for positions in German, so um, you may want to check that out as well. Um, uh, just to to add a question to that, because Bastian, you also mentioned that um, earlier, or um, that okay, sometimes um, candidates come here and they end up in a job which is probably not that good. And you personally also changed jobs. Um, um, I mean, both of you did, but you, you also said that you were not that happy in the beginning. So what would you say are kind of red flags when it comes to job offers? Um, well, there... like it, when it says uh, uh, anything, when it includes Rockstar or Ninja or uh, <laughs> Worldwide uh, 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 Megatron, uh, Basically, when you know when the job description is written um, to, and it doesn't really highlight uh, the uh, how should I say this? When basically when if what I mean is that a, a, a company uh, uh, how should I say this? Like a company when it presents itself, uh, the company if it cannot find any other um things to attract you and to seduce you than having a, a like a, a trying to cool uh, try to cool job description it maybe means that there's nothing interesting to really back it up you know uh, so that's one thing there's also uh, stay away from when the bullet points about the benefits just that you know free breakfast uh, cool macbook pro uh, when all those, you know, ben the bullet points are, are really long and the job description is, you know, half as long, like stay away from those because, I mean, yeah, I think the, the job description and the company should be interesting enough on its own to be interesting, to be relevant to you without all those add-ons or, of course, they, you know, it's always nice to have, but 
Like I remember like a, a graphic design designer position and uh, like one of the benefits was uh, yeah, if you stay with us for a year, you get uh, you get your the MacBook Pro you're you're working with, mm -hmm. and it's like, oh, okay, so I don't have good pay or I don't have good hours. I just have a fancy MacBook Pro. Yeah, for me, that's a sign to to stay away. Yeah, mm -hmm. and of course, I mean, of course, you know, you, you have other ways to research a company. You know, like you have like you can go on platforms like uh, the you know. Uh, company reviewing platforms such as Kununu and uh, what is it? Glassdoor. Uh, yeah, yeah. Glassdoor and you know it's easy to to see if there's a trend because of course there will always be the people that are super disappointed or super bitter and will try mm -hmm. to trash the company reputation but if you see a general trend, you know, that's uh, where people feel all right or they feel considered, you know, uh, that's good. Otherwise, if you, if it mentions like a lot of turnaround, um, uh, turnover, uh, high turnover rate, uh, it's also a clear sign to, to stay away. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So I think that's um, already helpful to know. And but uh, would you say that in, in terms of salary level, for instance, um, uh, Berlin is um, different from um, other places? Like, is the salary level here lower, specifically for yeah. startups? Yeah, yeah, it's still lower because it, and it's still playing uh, catching up with the cost of life. Yeah. Because uh, probably everyone in the chat knows that. It has been a, a crazy uh, 10 years, 20 years in the city. Mm -hmm. um, there has been this kind of rebirth. And uh, that's why that's why the startup uh, scene has been thriving because anybody with just a little bit of funding could, could survive because there was a lot of qualified people and low cost of life. And so pe uh, people were not afraid to fail because they didn't have to... to the tickets to try was not so expensive. Yeah. And that's why that was, that's why they started seeing us as thrived here. So unfortunately, um, uh, the, the average salary here is low. It's the, I don't know if it's the lowest, but it's one of the lowest still uh, nationwide. Mm -hmm. I think uh, it's the lowest uh, salary yeah. for capital in Europe. Yeah. Okay. And that's, uh, that's the, that's the, the extreme, <laughs> I think. <laughs> So it's it's of course rising, but not as fast as it should have been. Uh, yeah. So for I mean, it's a long time ago, but for example, uh, at, at HelloFresh, I was asked to go work for the French team in Paris, mm -hmm. and being paid at Berlin a salary. And of course, that was that was a complete joke yeah. because you know the difference is. I mean, Crazy. Yeah, that, that's, um, so um, I, I, I guess this is reduced a bit, but um, it's still it's still people are not getting paid enough here. Definitely. Yeah, I, I think that this changed a bit, not a bit, changed mm -hmm. quite a lot in the last eight years. Basically, since I'm here, uh, basically what you hear today from people about the scene, about investment, salaries, opportunities, and everything, people were saying with the same confidence the same thing eight years ago. Yeah, and it was nowhere close to that. So I was coming from Paris. It's not Paris is also like a big hub for for startups and for for investments and so on. And to me, it was a joke. Like it was like sure, like whatever you say. But honestly, in the last eight years, what you hear is actually a lot closer to the There is growth. There is there are investments. I think it can even caught up with Paris in terms of of um, um, VC investments. So yeah, it changed a lot in the last eight years. Even uh, salary wise uh, things improved unfortunately the um, the um, real estate market went crazy so that didn't help so it's still still behind that in in some ways but um, I would say the the salaries now are are a lot more competitive like if you compare with other places in Germany or in Europe they're not I agree with you it's not where it could be or it should be but there's there's some competition there's some um there's a there's a change and it's going in the right direction for for people at least for people in it yeah 
Yeah, I would also agree to that. I, I've, I have seen an increase in salaries over the past few years. Also, if you compare it to other German cities, so um, uh, like a lot of the people I know, for instance, um, have moved from southern Germany and other hubs to, to Berlin because it has become more attractive. Um, so I, yeah, I think hopefully this will continue to change. Uh, let's see. Um, by the way, I would like to invite everyone to um, ask questions. So I know I've not picked up all the questions that were asked, um, but um, we do still have about 10 minutes um, and um, you're warmly invited to ask any kind of questions we have, uh, you have. So um, um, yeah, just post them in the chat and um, I'll be happy to, to yeah, ask Bastia and Gabriel about that. Um, so we've already talked a bit about, um, yeah, applying for jobs and um, about red flags and so on. And you, you both have a bit of different experiences when it comes to job search. So would you say that in terms of, let's say, seniority and work experience, that there is a certain career stage where it's like, the, let's say, the best time frame to, to, to move and um, look for a job here? Like, um, for instance, Gabriel, I think you had more work experience than Bastian did, right, when, when you started looking for a job here. So would you say that it's easier if you're already a bit more advanced in your career? Or yes, absolutely. There's, there's, it's a lot easier if you start as a, as a junior or, a, or an intern, you will have a lot of competition. It's, there's, it's a huge um, destination for people coming to for university studying here or coming just for their their internship yeah it's, it's pretty crowded in that sense so at, um, at the entry level i would say quite quite busy but the more the more experience you have the easier it gets i would say yeah okay so um um, I think earlier we also had someone saying that um, I think she has about yeah just one year of experience. Um, so uh, how about that? Like if um, I think that's a very early stage, right? So it may be difficult. Um, with limited... um, if if you don't require, if you have, for example, you're a student or you have um, some a work permit, if that's not a hurdle for the employer, it's still doable. It's still okay. Uh, people, uh, companies will not make the effort for the, for juniors to to help them with uh, all the all the all that's needed to be uh, to settle in uh, in Berlin. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and that's also something, um, by the way, I think really important to keep in mind, if you are not from an EU country, you have to apply for a work permit and you need a certain minimum level of salary to, to get your visa, um, specifically if you don't belong to one of the yeah, um, professional groups that are in really high demand. So um, for a blue card, I think right now it's about 55k you need as annual salary and um, you can get like if you are in a high demand profession, it's it's less, but still you need a minimum salary, which is also often uh, one of the reasons why uh, if you are a more junior person, it's even more difficult. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, because that's a kind of limiting um, factor. Um, then uh, we also have someone who's asking about the um, quality of the software. Um, so would you say that, I, I don't know if you know about that, but in, do you know of companies in the software quality assurance and automation area? So do you, do you have any experience with that? I have some experience in that. So um, I'm not entirely sure what the question is really, like in terms of, of course, every software development company will have positions for, yeah. for the engineers. So that's yeah. definitely in, in, in demand um companies or agencies doing specifically software testing i don't know many i yeah. know not in germany mm -hmm. um but for for you know if if there's software there's going to be a qa department and there's going to be a job for you yeah that's, that's, that's yeah i think that's I, I, I hope i got the question right i think that what that's what um, he was also pointing at or trying to figure out if there are opportunities in this domain and if more roles are coming up, up or not. Um, um, I can also see a lot of questions related to um, salary and salary levels. And um, that's a topic I do get quite often. Um, um, but I think everything related to salary is always a bit difficult to answer because it really depends on the particular profile, right? Um, yeah, um, it, it does, but it's not just maybe one, one rule of thumb kind of advice would be 
don't don't make it really about that because the, the company hiring you will not that won't be the first criteria if that's the first criteria maybe you don't even want to work there yeah. but uh, uh, if they will look for your competence for your again how how well you fit with the company and so on salary maybe will make a difference if there's like two really close candidates but even so not going to be the biggest differentiator unless of course you're going to extremes like you're, you're asking way above the market level but uh, I, I think if you look at market level salaries, you should be confident to ask for it and not go for, for the super cheap um, uh, salary. But if, yeah. you, if, you have, if you want to get an idea, a range, what to ask during the interview, you, you can um, look to LinkedIn uh, as, a, as a source of information for that. You can again look on, on those companies. Uh, yeah, Glassdoor as well. Glassdoor mm -hmm. as well. And there's the German a uh, platform called uh, gehalt.de so gehalt means salary in german and it's a massive database uh, and you can drill you can really drill, drill down quite far to get an idea of what you what you could expect yeah i think that's a, a good piece of advice and, and generally i would say um, also, as Gabriel said, I wouldn't worry too much about, yeah, um, I don't know, asking for a bit too much salary. Um, but I think you can easily get an idea of a salary range. And then, as you said, right, if they really want to hire you, it's um, uh, uh, yeah. not about, yeah, yeah. More, a bit less just, salary. just ask for a fair, fair salary. Don't really don't make it, don't go to the extreme to say, I'm, you know, I would do anything, it doesn't matter the salary, and just go for the lowest, the lowest income because that's even a, a bad sign for, for employees. And, yeah. and you also, and you also do a disservice to everybody else that's coming after you because unfortunately, like, I mean, it would be good, of course, it doesn't, it's not happening like this, but it would be good to show solidarity to fight for the next person. So the employer actually cannot get somebody at this price level. So if, you, if you're a bit ambitious with your request or with your expectation, then you also make everybody's life easier. And, and uh, yeah. Mm. I, I do agree as well. And I think, I mean, I, I know that sometimes you have to compromise if you start working for an early stage startup um, that's currently doing fund, their funding round. Of course, it will sometimes be difficult for them to pay um, salaries at market level. But also in that case, I think it's good to have an open conversation um, because if, it's, if the company is really serious about growing, um, they can. They often come up with a solution where you have um, a commitment to to increase the salary um, um, or to get um, shares or, or other solutions. So um, if you talk to early stage startups, you may have an issue in terms of salary, but then uh, make sure that you get other benefits and the commitment. Mm -hmm. um, so if you feel that they are not willing to discuss it, then for me that's a red flag. Um, yeah. yeah, but they don't be fooled by the shares uh, because. Personally, I much rather have a better salary than more shares. I'm, I'm the opposite. Again, we disagree. But yeah. <laughs> I, I I would uh, happily trade some of the salary for for shares. Just make sure it's like a legit contract and so on. Like if you can have it checked by somebody who knows what they're doing, ideally a lawyer. Do that. It's it's worth it because yeah, there will be some unfair companies that take advantage of that, but. Just do the, the normal due diligence that you would do. And if you're, it, it's up to you, like it's a personal choice in the end, right? If you want to risk a bit and believe in the project, go for the shares. Otherwise, go for the salary. Absolutely fine. Both choices are fine, and you will find both in, in Berlin. And I was just going to add one little thing. So even when if I have a company that says, um, yeah, we cannot pay you very well, even there's like that not very well, there's a market level for that as well, right? There's like some base minimum that you know you can live live with it and there is this promise that we will compensate when there's money or give you shares and so on so don't don't take that as a as a final answer yeah fully agree okay we are already um running a bit over time but there are two final questions uh, that i want to pick up from the chat so first of all um we have several different questions about persons who are looking or from persons who are looking for jobs and wondering where they can find information on yeah, specific startups and so on. So do you have any recommendations of good resources to research um, the startup landscape in Berlin and in Germany? 
for me, it's going to be a quick question, a quick answer. No, I'm in the bubble and I look at LinkedIn and yeah. my network. That's that's all. But I'm sure Bastian yeah. has some insights. <laughs> yeah, I mean, of course, perfect segue. I mean, uh, I mean, of course, never underestimate the power of LinkedIn. Uh, and I know, or maybe you know, you can you can tell me more about this, but it seems like employers uh, tend to prefer LinkedIn almost over any other source uh, for sourcing candidates. And LinkedIn is sometimes, sometimes or often the first place where the post will be published, mm -hmm. where the, yeah, the job post will be published. Um, so that's often your best bet. But if you, but of course you can, um, uh, what's interesting is, and I will, I will put a link to it there. Of course you have a, a website that are better at giving you the jobs that you're more interested in. So for example, uh, that are, uh, if people are interested in working for companies that try to be sustainable or have a positive action on the world, you have, well, you will probably have, a, um, how do you call it, a job board uh, for that. Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe it's, it's, a, it's a way to then explore other companies you didn't know about. Uh, that's what I like about those niche job boards and is that you probably know one company or two companies in the job board but then it, you, you may be learning from other companies in the industry or in the mission that you're interested in so don't um, underestimate those like compared to the big uh, step stone and and all those and uh, I will put in the in the chat I do have a, a long blog post with all those uh, sort of niche job boards um, and it's not only about the startup world you also uh, in like in, in NGOs and hospitality and uh, um, you know uh, restaurants chefs all that so I'll putting I'm putting a link now in the in the, in the chat and hopefully you'll have you'll find a job board that you haven't uh, you haven't heard of, of before you know and you kind of sort of like hop from one uh, Start up to the other. Yeah, I think that's a good approach. So it would be yeah great if you share it in the chat, and then I'll also add it to the YouTube upload later. Um, and I also I think I would say LinkedIn is also definitely a good resource. So what I think what you can also do is if if you don't have a network um, here yet to really start looking out for conferences and events that you're interested in and then maybe connect with these people on LinkedIn later on or follow the companies that you've come across on job boards um, because that's yeah the, the easiest way to, to come across jobs. Like I also see that in my network, um, people often share jobs um, without publishing them anywhere else. Um, uh, so if you, if you make use of that, I think um, will also give you an advantage. Um, okay, there were a lot of other questions as well. I'm sorry that we couldn't um, answer each of them. Um, uh, I think one uh, topic that also came up a few times was um, startup yeah, funding and founding in general. So um, the question whether Germany in general is a startup friendly country. And that's a very big country, a uh, very big question and topic. Um, but maybe uh, just um, in, in general, I, I would say from what I have seen, um, there are probably markets that are a bit more startup friendly than Germany is, but there is a lot of investment going on, right? Um, would, you, would you agree to that? I mean, we've Definitely. talked about yeah. vibrant startup landscape, so. So as, as mentioned before, there's, a, uh, there's a, a, a strong belief in everybody's mind that this is the Eldorado and it's growing like crazy. <laughs> And for a long time, it was not quite like that. It was growing slowly. There was some interest and everybody was looking into that. But in the last years, like really every year, you see more and more funds, both German, European and, and American, investing more and more and more and more. So it's becoming, it's really attractive at this point. Um, yeah, as you said, there's probably the Valley and London are far away, uh, far, yeah. far ahead, but it's, it's very attractive still like you can if, if you want to do it in germany or in berlin specifically you will find the funds you'll find the ecosystem to to build your startup yeah and i think yeah i think there has been uh i mean it's only one indicator right but it's uh there has been more unicorns in berlin than like in last year 
than in the past five, I think, or something like this. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Agree. So I think um, for people who are interested in that, you can easily research accelerator programs and um, VCs um, online. There are, um, I think, um, a lot of uh, yeah resources for that. So I can also add a few links in the upload later if that's of interest. For you. Funds, in the end, funds is is uh, all the access to fund is is one success factor, but it's also often not the, the, the most important one. And the most important one is still the team yeah. first, to have uh, like the, the best people around you. And of course the idea uh, and, the, and, and a really good execution. Um, if you have good execution and good team, the funds will come. Fully agree fully agree because there is a lot of investment activity going on. So there's a high interest. Yeah. Okay. But that's another big topic. So I think we've already um, yeah, uh, taken a, a whole hour. Um, so I, I hope this was um, helpful um, for everyone who was listening. As I said, I will also upload um, a recording of the session on YouTube. And my, my final question to you, I'm, I'm really thankful um, that I had you as guests here today because I found it very interesting. Um, but my, my final question to both of you would be, um, what, what would be your one piece of advice that you would give someone who, who's looking for a startup job right now? What's the first thing they should do um, when they leave the session? <laughs> um, so I would say it's, it's not, that special at the end of the day, right? Just take it, take it easy. Uh, if you decide it's gonna to has to be Berlin, just look at it normally. There's nothing that crazy special about Berlin. Just make sure you have an ICV, make sure you look at the job description and you're, you're finding the right people. Um, you have some things which are easier in terms of the language. German is not that critical, especially for a first job and so on. But at the end of the day, if you present yourself well and you pay the right attention to a, to what the, the, the job description is and what the role is, it's gonna happen. It's really not too crazy. And if you do your, your homework right, you have all the chances to, to make it happen. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Bastian, how about you? Well, uh, yeah, I don't think I can add more to, to that, I guess, I don't know. I can't, yeah. I, uh, I don't know, like you know, if, if you if you decided that Berlin is the next step for you in your in your life, in your personal life, or in your professional life, then yeah, then keep at it. But it's also right to um, set the right expectations um, that um, Berlin is a good choice, but it's not the only choice. Um, that there are opportunities elsewhere. I mean, we can also talk about. Hamburg in Germany, for example, it's also a very international city. Uh, also a lot of stuff there. But yeah, as Gabriel said, you you know, if you do your homework, you still have your chances, but yeah, don't um, if your expectations are too high, then you'll you'll find yourself discouraged too too fast. Fully agree as well. All right, so yeah, that was um, very insightful. Thanks a lot um, for everyone who joined in today. Um, also, thanks to both of you for taking the time to, to answer uh, my questions and also the questions we had here in our audience. And um, I think, I hope this was valuable for everyone um, who joined in. And I'd love to see you again in one of our other events. So I'm, I'm planning to continue with this career talk series. So if you know anyone who you think should definitely be a guest in future events, or if you have a topic that you would really like me to cover, um, then yeah, just message me on LinkedIn or um, send an email to our um, Mitra address. I'm going to share it here in the chat. Um, or just leave me a note in the chat here. I always appreciate um, your, your feedback and input. And yeah, again, thanks for um, joining me today, Gabriel and Bastian. Thank I you. Really it's been a pleasure. Thanks, everyone. Yeah. Yeah, it was nice. Bye. Thank you. Have a nice evening. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. Take care. Bye, everyone. Take care.